Crepo to take a look at game one. Thank you very much, D-Man. SK decisive win here in game one over Rocket. Let's take a look at picks and bans from Rocket. A very AP heavy composition coming out. Crepo, what are the things that you noticed? Um, first off, I want to point out that SK played it smart. They went in with a strategy. They weren't really afraid of a single player. They just said, okay, we're going to ban Tristana. First pick, Kogma. We're comfortable with that. Um, if you want to pick anything that's left, fine. But we're, we're happy with that. And in a sense, it forces Rocket actually to counterban Kogma, in my opinion, because I think Tristana and Kogma are by far the two strongest AD carries right now. Uh, unless you play a Twitch on, on Korean level, and you can make a lot of picks. But it's really hard to do that. Um, so good job on SK. And then, yeah, Rocket came out and picked some magic damage, picked some ore. And they have this beautiful protect the AD carry comp. And then they play Corky. Yeah. I have to agree. Like, we got down to that last pick. Dr. Mundo was locked in. And we were talking backstage. What are you going to run top lane? We know Zazas, he's run Alistair before. We were looking at it going, you've got this sort of very heavy team fight comp. Why not pick a Shivana into it? And they went Lulu. Double AP voluntarily with Corky, who's a lot of AP, into a Mundo. There was always going to be a point where Mundo would just stand there and you couldn't kill him. What were they going to do against him? Yeah. I also want to highlight just a quick point. Rocket, when Selva is uncomfortable, lose a lot of their games. Rocket have early picked like AD carries to get Selva comfortable to win games, and they have to prevent doing this later because Corky against Cog Mundo is not going to work. Quick time before we actually head over into the mid game and the late game. You saw Rocket fumble, fall behind, and I don't think post 25 minutes they ever even pushed the lane out. A Shivana with a Blade of the Ruin King could have done that because she can go toe to toe with a Mundo, brush him out, and still be mobile enough with Dragon's Descent or whatever it's called to get back out. I don't you do that. You got it right. You got it right. Well done. I'll, I'll get there eventually. <laughs> um, so I would have loved to see see more presence uh, coming out of Rocket because they played a they played a composition. Full Magic works. You know, Morgana at least works together. But you gotta win early, and the first blood didn't came until 17 minutes into the game. Yeah, and you're talking actually about the mid and late game, but as you mentioned, the early game, we know Jankos can be very decisive in that early game, and he was, but I do want to put a, a replay up on the screen for the one thing that Rocket did well in that early game was Jankos and story time with Prepo, because you noticed something that we hadn't before. Yeah, I'm going to be talking a lot this game because there's so many things I like <laughs> pointing out, so uh, apologies for that, but basically what's happening right now is you see Jankos go to his blue buff, all in is in position to walk down the lane, and Lu is standing at the red buff. So you now you gotta imagine that you're SK Gaming, and if we roll the clip right now, they can't see what we're seeing, but so Yankos is gonna solo start his buff. Zagas is, is showing that he's a good actor because he's gonna walk up, shield himself on the exact timing he would normally pull the buff, walk back to lane, and he'll even meet Mundo there. So in SK's head right now, Yankos uh, started at red buff, but he's actually starting at blue. This allows bot lane to play super aggressive bottom because they, they they expect the three-minute gank to come bottom, so SK is going to play back. At the same time, top lane is not afraid of a gank because we know where the jungler started. And this is exactly why Janko started with a sweeper. And you'll see it later. They'll go up on the top lane, uh, get Mundo's flash, almost kill him even. And I really like this mind game. I really like all the pieces, the way they were playing, because it's not only Janko's doing this, it's top lane and bot lane working together. Yeah, we can actually take that replay off the screen. And something that is really impressive to note, the bait, the fact that it got a summoner spell almost led to a kill, we need to keep an eye if that continues happening because if the team is well aware of it and all of Rocket are working to these, these uh, the same beat, that is why Jankos gets so many of these first bloods. So we'll have to keep an eye on the, the rest of the series. And they might be very mad at Krepo because he, he let the secret out. Um, but anyway, as you mentioned, they got the flash out of Mundo when they came up there the first time. They killed him when they towered over him the next time and actually got a couple of objectives of that, which was maybe the only good thing that came out of that early game from Rocket Krepo. Well, early game, it was 70 minutes yeah, in the game. Yeah. I just want to, I like that they turned on the switch. They went They went for first blood into tower, get another tower, and then SK did the same thing they did a couple of times, they tunneled. They tunneled on trying to get the kills, and then Rocket would react with a what they call a cross-map objective, and they took a tower mid lane. Later instance, SK was chasing Rocket down the map with Ari again, looking for picks. Rocket said, fine, we'll get the dragon. So they were doing some things right, but I think they were really a victim of their composition, yeah. and later in the game, if you can't push out your side lanes, there is no way you can pressure the map because everybody will just be together. We have to go back to the beginning of the day when we <laughs> said Rocket, yesterday they had massive problems. They picked compositions with no wave clear. Today they picked compositions, hey, we've got wave clear, but we're going double AP with an AP non hyper carry into a Mundo. So again, pick and ban strategy from Rocket is letting them down because gameplay decision making is pretty solid. 
Yeah, uh, and I'd actually like to think it could have worked out. There was one instance when they sneaked the dragon and they diverted all the attention by giving up a, a kill in their top jungle. They sneaked the dragon. Okay, they got some gold. SK was not really ahead in gold, but if you don't fight at that time and get those kills, you won't be able to do anything. I actually just want to take a step back, and if you look at the whole game, yes, SK were in the lead, they played safe, they had a, a late game scaling comp, but neither of these teams were really playing to win. It felt like they were playing to not lose. It's it's and very think, typical. Yeah, in because the losses game. yesterday. It's very typical in your first game of a BO5 that you, what you should do as 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 an experienced player is play comfort picks and play calm and just feel out and just like get into the game a little bit. And you'll see SK did that. So they played they played comfort picks and Raiden went for Kale. There were plenty of meta picks available. Kongma safe champions, long range, pretty straightforward and late game. And Rocket had to do fancy stuff to be able to win this game, and that's really hard to do that in the first game of a series. Yeah, the one thing that I also just think for Rocket, the style is very drastically different to what they were running yesterday. Uh, yesterday, the Zillion pick was very, very important for Overpowers, the game that they managed to pick up quite well. The Fizz picks did not work out for him. And now you've got away from that aggressive comp into a very reactive, uh, uh, sort of defensive team composition. But if you're going to do that, it has to hinge on a focal point. It has to hinge on something that whatever you're protecting is the backbone, is the core. And a core key is not that. No, I'd love to see. I mean, we know Selliver plays Jinx. That might have been a thing, but that is a confidence thing, because Jinx, you got to be so aware of your positioning, and it's hard to pick that here in that first game of the series. Uh, I would have liked to see Shivana Twitch instead. Shivana goes in, gets the Oriana ball, draws all the aggro to her, and then Twitch just puts on spray and pray and just goes goes mental. In worst case, you still have the you still have Black Shield and Oriana Shield for the Twitch. It's it should be enough. You don't need all these. You don't need a triple protection comp if you're gonna run a Corky. It baffles my mind because Freddy even was lenient on the opposing team because he went to Giant spells. He could have even done Spirit Visage and immediately went for uh, Banshees, and then it would have sealed the deal as well. Yeah, it's it, it's it's very. It's very rare that you can literally just look at a game straight up and say this a whole thing hinges on one or two small decisions. And for Freddy, we'll see what he does, because he had three targeted bands his way, Nidalee, Aatrox, and Maokai, all taken off the table. Rocket felt that he was the threat. I still think Ari on, on Jez's has to be a consideration. He went 4-0-3, as D-Man pointed out. You can't let him just get that super comfortable assassin, because she is working for him, and she is helping SK control that mid-game when they find picks. Yeah, so bottom line here, Rocket has to do something about their picks. And for SK, they can basically do the exact same thing, but uh, maybe be adaptive if something crazy comes out from Rocket. Yeah, I think SK should think a little more about their builds still. Uh, but that's maybe that's just me being personally uh, about support itemization. I do not play Kale, but I felt, and Raider went for a really early Ruby Sidestone. I would have liked to see the Mikhail's rush quicker. I'd have liked to see better boots. Just more mobility, more deep warding, and then play with your side lanes and just put the pressure on the enemy, and then you can start rotating, because it's so hard if you're only pushing mid and then you have to wait for ages until that lane finally starts pushing and then you can slowly rotate. If you move around the map, you can put so much pressure. I got one little thing to note. SK again, warding, terrible in the early game. It got better in the mid game. But they continue to demonstrate as a team, their warding sucks. <laughs> All right, and on that note, when we return, SK Gaming tries to keep their momentum alive while Rockat will look to bounce back in game two. Don't go anywhere.